Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome back to the channel. As you can probably tell, this feels a little bit different already. Basically, if you haven't caught the title of this video, the entire purpose of this video is to give you an update on the Bobby slash Oggy situation. If you don't know what that is, basically, I have a horse that I've been having legal trouble with and everything else. I will leave a video link down below that will explain most of it for you if you're here and you're new and you just have no idea what I'm talking about. I will leave the video that explains everything, pretty much anyway, in the description below for you. Because the purpose of this video isn't to go over that at all. But in an elevator pitch of what's happened, I would like to give you an update on my horse because the last time we spoke, it was a very somber situation. I was at a bit of a crossroads. I didn't know where me and Bobby were going to go in terms of Bobby's care and everything else. The legal side as well, I suppose. There was a kind of bit of everything in there. So this video is sort of the continuation on from that that you guys have probably been waiting for for a long time. I did want to let things run a little bit longer. I was hoping for some, so a little bit more information on some areas, should we say, but I will get into it anyway. If it wasn't painfully obvious, there's going to be no plants in this video besides the fact that I'm sat around plants. So if you're here for just plant content, please just leave quietly. That's absolutely fine. But no nastiness, please, because I didn't accept it last time on the video and I'm not going to accept it this time. So it's also why this video is out on a Tuesday. So it doesn't actually disrupt my regular content if that's what you're here for, because if that's what you're here for, that's absolutely fine. But a lot of people are very invested in this situation. So anyway, I want to start this video as I have started other videos by simply thanking you guys so, so, so much for your generosity. Again, I didn't expect that response from the GoFundMe when I linked it originally. I, I still, I still actually don't, I don't know why I thought now I'd have the words right a couple months later, but I'm ever, ever, ever grateful to you all, every single person, even people who just shared this video. I know this video sort of went a little bit further than definitely what it was intended to. Um, which I'll get into. But yeah, I'm just, I'm so grateful. So thank you very much. And Bobby really thanks you as well. On that quick note, sometimes in this video, I might use Bobby's name. Sometimes I might use Oggy's name. It's not deliberate. It's just kind of a slip of the tongue because at the livery, he's still known as Oggy. It's how he was known when he got there. That's what the staff have always called him. So that's what he's known as at the livery, just so you know. So if I do slip up and call him the wrong name, I'm not trying to be disrespectful towards him or anything like that. It's just, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. And everyone that talks about him, it goes through the same motions. So I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any way. So in this video, I want to give an update on Oggy, Bobby, but I also want to give an update on some legal stuff. So I will probably go back and forth between the two because obviously, as you can imagine, they're quite interlinked. So let's just get on for that. I do have literally a massive, massive notepad file full of points because I didn't want to miss anything out because as you can imagine, there's a lot going on. So if I look down occasionally, that's all I'm doing. I'm just looking at a big old file of points that I've made for you today because... I don't want to make 10 million videos on this one. I can just make the one big one, right? So the video that I initially made, which again is linked down below, it traveled quite far. And as a result, I think there's a couple of opinions that have been sort of put out there that aren't, I don't want to say they're not correct, but they just, it's just not, it's not what the situation is, if that makes sense. And I totally understand how that's occurred because the video that went sort of nuts was that one video, right? And I think I said in that original video, look, there's a lot in here that I'm going to not entirely cover, right? Because I can't put a year's worth of updates and, and developments into the one video and repeat myself over and over again. So there was obviously things missed out of that. Um, a comment that's been picked up a few times is that Oggy slash Bobby is a very green horse. And that that is what has occurred here, basically. Um, there is an, there is a few people of the opinion that I bought a really green horse and, and that's why we're having the problems. I'd just like to clear that up and say that Bobby is actually very well schooled. He's, it's very evident to be honest when, when a good rider gets on him, um, it, it's very evident his schooling. And we knew that straight away when we tested him at the livery. I think I mentioned this before. I've had really experienced riders on him and I did that very quickly as soon as we thought there was some problems. So, you know, just to sort of figure him out. And the first thing they said when they got off was schooling is very evident. So it's not a case for green horse at all. He's now, is he now 14? Yeah. He was kind of 12 when I bought him. He was probably just going to be turning 13. Um, because in horse years, doesn't really matter how old they are. When it's the start of a new year, 
the horse ages a year, if that makes sense. So they have their actual birthday on a passport, but just in equestrian terms. I don't even know why we do that. Maybe it's just easier. Um, we would say that they're a year older. For example, Bobby is not um, 14 yet. He's probably around May time, but for the sake of argument, equestrians would say he's 14 now. So anyway, so yes, he's not green. That was the first point I wanted to mention. What is my second point? It doesn't really matter to me that I clear this up because it's a non-point. It's not really to do with Bobby specifically, but a lot of people seem to think that I went into this whole thing not knowing anything about horses, and that's just not true. I can understand why a lot of people might not have got that because I didn't say in that the big video that went out in December, sorry, November, I think it was, not December. And I've only ever mentioned it maybe once, maybe around the time I was looking for a horse. So I totally understand that people have missed that part. But essentially, my grandmother, my late grandmother, was a jockey and she owned a riding school for I don't even know how many years, actually. I've never checked. Probably about 20 plus years. A long, long time. And down my entire father's line of family tree, we'll say, they've all been very heavily equestrian. So I wasn't full on born into it, but I spent every single weekend, pretty much that I had when I was a child, on a riding school. I think I started riding as young as you tend to when you're a kid, right? <laughs> Equestrians will know this. When you're old enough, you sat on someone's Shetland that's 20, that doesn't go anywhere, that sort of thing. So I did that, and I think I stopped riding. Might have been around about 11, and that is due to my grandma getting older, the riding school was sold on, I then had school commitments. I was almost into secondary school, and I ended up, I ended up moving schools a couple of times, but I ended up a school that was quite a way away. So basically, I had no involvement with horses once the riding school went down um, until when was it? it was I was like 31 or something so a couple of years ago anyway but in that time when I was a kid I did actually I jumped I did dressage I did all kinds of shows I placed a lot of the time I think uh, it's it's a tough one I don't have any evidence of any of this not that I think I need to but in a nutshell my Dad's side of the family was quite abusive towards me. I might have hinted at this once before. Long story short, there used to be so many VHSs of me riding. There was probably photos of me riding. I know there was, um, because I still have a few favorites and I still remember some of the ponies I was riding when I was younger. But I don't have any of that because my dad kind of, I don't want to like air family laundry, but basically my dad fell out with some of his family and it's been a bit of a thing. And as a result, when grandma died, we didn't get anything given back to us. So all my rosettes were gone. The VHSs were gone. The photographs were gone. So I actually have nothing but my own memories, which it's not ideal, but that's not the point anyway. Sorry, but I digress. My point is I haven't gone into this knowing nothing. I keep saying sometimes I don't know much. And that's because if anybody has ridden as a child and then not ridden for 20 years and picked it up as an adult, you'll find that it's all gone pretty much. My seat came back. It didn't take too long to come back actually riding, but it's not great. And scoliosis has accounted for some of that, but a lot of it's just, you forget. So I do say things like that because I've as good as forgotten it. Do you know what I mean? I don't like to count it, but technically I'm not coming into this with nothing at all. I used to look after horses when I was a kid. Um, I just haven't for 20 years and I never thought I'd be able to do that on my own ever again but obviously through working and having this business and having the channel and so if I was sort of I, you know I had the opportunity to do it so that's that anyway I just want to get that out of the way again I realize I don't have to explain myself to anybody that believe me guys that's not where this comes from I just thought I'd give you like an FYI um but yeah, what else have I got for you? Oh yeah, I was looking for a horse in the first place because a lot of people said, look, you should have loaned first. And in some senses, I agree with you because it's, it's a smart thing to do if you don't know if you're prepared for horse ownership or anything like that. It's a smart thing to do. However, there was no loans going. Loans were definitely considered when I was in the market for a horse. I didn't love the idea, but I would have been open to it. But there was never anything suitable for me and where I was at with my riding. A lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time horses go on loan if they need an exercise rider because they need to be kept ticking over and that can sometimes mean the horse is a little bit more, I, I don't know how to say it, but they, they've got a job, they're busier, they've got a busier brain and that kind of thing and that's not really the horse I was in the market for. So 
in a lot of ways, the learning didn't really work. Riding school was happy to keep going there, but if you guys remember, I got turned away from my riding school at the time. I was very lucky I got a spot early last year now, and I got offered a permanent spot. Ironically, after the horse thing went down, and we learned that Bobby was just absolutely not suitable for me at all. Um, but at the time, I couldn't even get riding lessons, so I was I was a little bit stuck. There was, don't get me wrong, there were trainers, uh, sorry, riding instructors out there that would do freelance lessons, but they were doing them to come to your barn for your horse, if that makes sense. Riding schools, I think a lot of them were shutting down last year, I think. Late 2020 and uh, throughout 2021, a lot of them were shutting down. So it was really, really difficult to get lessons because the ones that didn't shut down were now full. So it was kind of a multitude of things that led me there. But again, I don't feel the need to defend myself. I'm genuinely just explaining so you guys know. Um, so don't, don't worry, I'm not feeling the need to, you know, explain all that. So some legal points just to quickly clear up. Let me read this one second because I wrote it a week ago. Um, yeah, so a lot of people have said you don't have a case, walk away now. I get that. Um, Obviously, I haven't given away all the evidence that I have in my videos because I'm not that stupid. Uh, I have to assume that everything I ever say to you guys, the seller is watching. So I will, you know, the things I've said to you, the things that went in the legal letters, right? There's a lot that uh, I have on evidence that the seller, I mean, she should know that I have, but clearly she doesn't. Um, but I have a lot more than that. But in terms of a case, I'll willingly tell you that I have grounds for misrepresentation that are really difficult to argue because of the show jumping records and stuff like that. I'll not go into that because it's not about this video necessarily, but anyway, I will continue on. I know a lot of people, by the way, were telling me to drop the case due to like mental health reasons, and I, that's not what I mean here. I just mean the people that have told me to drop it from the legal side, a lot of them are from the US, and it does kind of work a little bit differently there. It's not entirely the same, so... There's been some wires crossed there, but I just wanted to cover that really, really quickly. Oh, okay, this was a this was a big one that a lot of people came up with, and that was to out the seller. Now, I don't know what you can get away with in the US, but I absolutely could not do that here because if I went and said something about this seller now, right, for example, on this video or on Facebook or something, anywhere, doesn't really matter, I guarantee you they will come at me for slander, defamation, whatever you want to call it. I absolutely guarantee you because they have the cash, guys. Remember, these guys are multi, multi-millionaires. And I do not say that lightly. I really, really, really don't. It's crazy. And I keep um, reiterating this because I think if these people had less money, a lot of people would have given up by now and just settled, right? They don't. They have plenty of cash. So they would absolutely come for me and they would probably absolutely win because I have a platform to spread this information around, so there's some good grounds that I had some sort of intent. I'm sure it would certainly seem like there was intent when I made the video or whatever I did. It's just not gonna go down that way. There's no point. I either fight them in court through the way that has always been spoken about, or I don't fight them at all. There is no way that I can just out the seller like that, because if I try and out the seller like that, I'm telling you now, they will come for me in court, and now I have to spend the same money, if not more money, defending my point anyway, and bringing up all this evidence about the horse anyway. Does that make sense? Like, it doesn't, it, nothing is gained by it. If anything, I put myself in a really risky position. So I don't know if that was said by just people in the US and it works different there. Maybe it does, I don't know. But out here, no, no, we are not doing that here. That's not an option for me. Now, don't get me wrong, if I went to court and I won, you bet your sweet ass. I'd be releasing the names and everything else on here. And I promise you, in such event that that occurs, you will absolutely be getting that. Believe me, because I will have worked for years to be able to say that to you. So don't even worry about it. <laughs> Literally, there's, if I had the opportunity to do it, guys, I would have already done it, you know? But anyway, right. I feel like I'm blowing out here. Am I blowing out a bit? Let's have a look. Um, ooh, a little bit. Hopefully I'm not blowing out too much, guys. I'm really, really sorry about that. I can see that I'm getting quite blown out. Obviously I'm in my studio and it's very, very sunny and I'm really trying here to, uh, to not have reflections on me, but we'll see. The Bobby update that you've all been waiting for. So the way we left it was we, we had the GoFundMe, which again, oh my goodness, did not expect that. 
the GoFundMe money was being used for essentially a mixture, and this was not my idea, this was the livery's idea, a mixture of swimming um, Oggy, Bobby, and hacking him out. So he had a day of what I think you would call trail riding or whatever in the US, and swimming, so alternate days. He would have a day off a week, of course, where he did nothing, but generally that's what he was doing. Now, you might think that the hacking doesn't do much, but it does, especially because my livery is on top of a huge hill. So there is some effort involved in there, but it's a bit more, it's just to get him out, you know, make sure he's nice and safe, stimulate his brain a little bit, all of the things, because he's been in a field all of last summer and had, he obviously he's had a great holiday and then he got very fat, but it was just for that. And it was just to support the exercise via swimming. So he had a couple of weeks of that, actually. He had maybe three, four weeks. I can't remember in total. But he lost about 30 kilograms, which was very, very nice. Um, and he looked like a different pony. He borderline looked like a cob when he went in, I think, to start swimming. And then he's he's looking really well, to be honest. He looks really, really good. All his weight's off. He just looks... He looks like a Connemara now. <laughs> so he's looking really, really well. So that's essentially where we were at with that. There was something that happened while this process was undergoing that I don't think anybody had planned on um, because it happened, literally I got a message the day before I was to ring the trainer and organize Oggy going off to be trained actually, it was it was that close. I think I got the message, I'll still have it, it's just on my old phone, got a new phone, don't ask. I think I got the message about 8.30 at night on a Sunday and I was due to ring, that's my ceiling dripping, I was due to ring on the Monday morning. So it, it really happened at the last minute. So that was put on hold. So I will explain why. So there was a young lady moving on to my livery. I didn't know who she was or anything like that, but obviously she spoke to my livery owner and she was moving her horse onto the yard. I think she's a show jumping horse, quite spicy, needs ridden a lot, that type. Very, very beautiful horse, to be fair. And she was bringing him onto the yard on a certain date. Can't remember the date. It's got nothing to do with me, really. And she was asking my livery owner if there was a point in time where there'd be another stable free because she was thinking about another horse and the horse that she had in mind to my understanding was that she wanted something that she could sort of get on and go and hack out and it wasn't something that did need ridden every day or it would be a ball of fire equestrians you know what I'm on about my livery owner jokingly said they were stirred because it's funny my this woman's horse's stable is directly opposite Oggy's. And he pointed back at the stable and said, jokingly, you know, well, this one's probably going to be for sale at some point in the future. He's just been exercised at the moment and sort of getting his, his summer bod off kind of thing. And the woman, from what I'm told, because again, I wasn't here for this, took immediate interest in Oggy. And it was really nice because she got to meet him as he was because he was in the stable. And he's, he's not very pleasant towards you over the stable door. He is not. If you just walk down the aisle and you're nowhere near him, the ears will be flat back and he'll be telling you with his teeth, stay away from me. But she got to meet him in that state. And for whatever reason, she was not phased at all. I, I can't, I'm not even making this up. She wasn't phased at all. She really quite liked him. So that night, I got a message from my yard owner saying, you're not going to believe this, but there might be another option here. Um, and he explained, you know, this woman's coming onto the yard, she moves on. I'm sure it was like the 12th of November or something like that anyway. And I'm sure that that video went out on like the third. So he'd been doing this for a while. And he said like, there's this woman moving onto the yard. And I jokingly, she, you know, she's thinking about getting another horse. She was asking about another space. And I jokingly said, oh, well, this one's probably for sale at some point. And she was immediately, she didn't even laugh. She was really, really interested. And she had a good look at him and everything else. And I was like, are you serious? She was like, and he was like, yeah, I am. Um, and we had a quick chat, I think, over message. And Justin said, well, this isn't the worst thing at all. And we should think about this because if this woman decides through the next few weeks or whatever that she really loves this horse, 
then it means he stays with us and he doesn't have to go anywhere. No, he won't be trained with a trainer on another place, on another yard. But what it means is he stays at home. He has everything the same. Everything's consistent. He has the same staff working with him that have always worked with him. My staff at my livery treat him very compassionately, even though he's quite violent. They, do you know what I mean? They're not going to do anything nasty towards him. They're not going to treat him any, any differently. Um, they have their own little way of dealing with him and only certain staff can deal with him. So it's all sort of penciled in. It's all done in a certain way. Whereas the other horse is sort of, it's a bit more fluid. Um, my livery man, my livery owner, sorry said that, you know, this, this could be really good for Oggy, this, this, you know, this way. And I was like, yeah, it could. Um, and I think he got back to me a couple of days later and said, look, she's still really interested. She's come up to see him. Um, she's got some questions. And I was like, okay, okay, cool. And those questions were the usual questions, you know, does he, does he load? Does he do this? Does he do that? What's he like? Um, those questions were answered. I think we had never loaded Oggy. We'd got him off the trailer and he came to the livery and he never left, right? So my livery owner, bless his soul, took matters into his own hands and loaded Oggy for her, videoed it, I think. Uh, that all seemed well to make triple tour. I think, she, did he take him the week after? He took him out for a short drive, so probably just around the village or something in the trailer and just sort of let him sit in there and stuff to make sure he really, really loaded and travelled because I think a point of contention for this lady was that her horse is just terrible to load. And to be fair, she's on the yard training this horse to load quite a lot. So obviously it has problems. So she probably didn't want to um, add to that. So that went really, really well. Um, we both got updates on how, it was really weird, on how Augie was doing with his exercise and things like that. So swimming updates, we got photos, photos of him in the field and stuff like that. I got a lovely photo sent of the back of his ears on a hack. Um, all of those things, which was really, really nice. Another thing was we actually at some point turned out Oggy in the field with this lady's horse to see how they got on. I think they, because this woman's horse went opposite Oggy, they sort of got to know each other anyway. And then they were turned out together and apparently they were just inseparable. They just loved each other straight away, which I thought that was amazing. And all these great things are happening this whole time. I'm like, okay, is this lady serious? Does she want to buy him and everything else? She was actually, bless her little soul, she was buying um, little bits and pieces for him and she hadn't even bought him. She loved him that much. Um, they just seemed to really gel from what I heard. I hadn't seen any of this. This is just secondhand info. So I had to weigh this up because I thought, okay, if she's serious about this, this is something that we should keep nurturing and moving forward. And just because there's no time limit on it necessarily, but I wanted to move along with Augie's training if that's what I was going to do. So at this point, I have a lady that's interested, but I don't fully know if she's willing to push the button on him or whatever, because I thought, right, she needs to ride him. So he needs to be in a position where he's fine to ride, which he was, to be fair. So the livery uh, owner asked me, you know, can she come and ride him? I was like, yeah, of course, she can She can try him in whatever way she likes. She can take him in, in the school, do some groundwork. She can do whatever she likes, honestly. Um, is it be good for him? But at this point, I was thinking, okay, where do we go from here? Because if she'd like to push the button on him, I need to tell the trainer, no, I need to figure out what is best for Oggy here and what to do. The point of sending him for training was that ultimately it was to help Oggy have some tools to learn to trust humans again, essentially. There's a few reasons why, but a lot of the reason why was to ultimately help him find someone that loved him, would understand him, and give him a great life, right? And it was really difficult for me because it's almost like, <sighs> it's almost like that person has just materialized out of nowhere, right? At the exact right time, at the exact right time when Oggy needed it, right? Because he's in a position now where he's ready to be ridden and enjoyed and everything else. Because he kind of wasn't before. He was a little bit overweight. And, you know, he was just at this point now where it was literally he was at that crossroads and someone magically turned up and fell in love with him. So I thought, okay, let's, let's ask this lady what she wants to do. And 
the lady really, really wanted to take him. And at the end of the day, he was going to be where he currently is, which is amazing. I walk past this boy every single day, nearly. And I see him, even though he's not pleased to see me. He's the same as he's always been. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing changed. But he's here and he's safe and I see him every day. There was that. There was the fact that this woman had a horse that Augie seems to love. She wasn't phased by his behavior. I told her all about the behavior in the school. Um, so she's well aware of the dropping the shoulder thing, all of the, the naughty things he does. She was aware of everything. And because she rides such a fizzy show jumper that, I mean, I've seen her lunge that horse. It's very eventful. Every time I'm there and she lunges that horse. It's very, very spicy horse. I think it's a Hanoverian or, or how, however you say it. Um, he's a spicy boy. So she's not phased by a lot of that behavior. She was kind of the right person for that. And myself and the yard owner have always said, you know, if that horse found a really competent show jumper that doesn't mind being decked and things like that and doesn't mind the stable behavior and can get past it, then he's found his owner. So there she was, literally there she was. So she said, look, I, I would love to take him. I love him. I think he's great. It got to a point where she said, I've ridden him. I'm very, very happy. Said, you know, you can do some more testing. You can go on a hack with him because I think she rode him in the school. Um, everything else, she was very, very happy with him. And she said, look, I'd love to take him off you on the, I think it was the 1st of December. Um, because that's when a new month at delivery would roll over. So she wanted to start a new month with him and then for insurance. And there was loads of reasons really logistically why she wanted to do that. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, what would you be looking to pay for him? Because this isn't the subject that I tackled. And needless to say, I knew I was never going to be able to sell him for what I bought him for because I bought him for £13,000. He's definitely not worth that. Um, he wasn't worth that necessarily anyway. It was more like COVID increase, which I, I respect. But literally, <laughs> um, the offer was made for about a tenth of that. And... I thought, oh, God, Lord, that's, that's a huge loss. But I spoke again to my yard owner, and we were both like, look, in terms of what's best for this horse, this is this is it. It's not – we can we can send him off to training, and we can wait for another owner like this to come along. But we don't know who will come along. We don't know when they'll come along. We don't know where Augie will go. It's just everything about the situation seemed to just fit, right? So – the decision was made to pass him on to this lovely lady that I'm pleased to tell you does have him at the livery and I do see him every single day. And he is, he's ridden. I haven't seen him ridden in the school actually. That's my living wall if you can hear it. I haven't seen him ridden in the school, but every time I rock up, I think I saw him coming back off a hack once uh, and I saw him in hand in the arena a couple of times. We've had some really bad weather. And he just seems, he seems fine. He seems like himself, don't get me wrong. Not a lot's changed. There's no big mental update for Augie, but he has an owner that is stimulating him and you know he's, he's happy and he's got this other horse there so when they turned out they turned out together because my livery turns out in pairs and it's just lovely to see that it's really really nice to see that and really that's what this whole thing was all about right it was about finding him somewhere amazing and at the end of the day I didn't want to take the risk I didn't want to take the risk on him missing out on this owner because the next owner down the line might be, they might be a better owner, they might be a worse owner. It was, it was a bit too much of an unknown for me and I, I couldn't help but recognize how poetic this, this whole thing has been in so many ways that you won't even know yet. But I just found, I, I just thought it was the right thing to do. So that is what I have done. I passed him on to this lovely owner. So I no longer own Oggy, but I see him every single day. So I will try and find a picture of him. I think I do have a picture in with, I think he's been turned out with another horse. I might have it, I might not. If I don't, I'm sorry. He obviously just loves his life. I think in this picture he still has his ears back, even in the field. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, that's him anyway. And I'm, I'm sure that's his happy face to an extent. I think it's just the fact that the human was there. Um, but yeah, that's the situation on Bobby slash Oggy. Of course, that's not, all of it. Uh, there is more to come. So let me have a look, see what I've told you and what I've missed. Okay, the legal side. Right, let me just recap. Apologies, guys. Let me just recap what I had down here. Yeah. So 
I, I think, I can't remember if I had updated you guys that I'd sent the letter off. I think what happened was in a report recently, I've said something along the lines of, oh, I'm waiting for some information to come through the door, if you feel me kind of thing. Um, I was waiting for some responses from that. I think I'd had the response to the letter, but I was waiting for some other quotes and things to come back. That's what I was kind of getting at in the video. So at some point, I can't remember the date, guys. I do apologize, but it might have been a couple of weeks after um, after that big video. I can't remember. I'd have to really look back. But anyway, it's not that important. We sent a letter back for the seller, and this was going to be the last letter. In this letter, we basically said screw you, you're supposed to address this show jumping thing. You know that thing that's kind of unarguable? You just kind of have to admit fault. Uh, and that's a, a really strong point in court. Um, please address it. We've asked you twice. You can't not address things. In that letter we had put at the time, because it was true, uh, we are considering selling the horse to regain some um, losses of expenses and stuff like that, and gave her a right to inspect the horse before sale which she declined pretty aggressively because there's nothing wrong with the horse. That was dumb, and I don't mind telling you this on camera if you happen to see these videos, that was really dumb because in court you can't really speak for anything about how the horse actually was because you've just literally given up your right to have that say because you declined to inspect the horse. So that's kind of bully for you, and we kind of hoped that you'd fall for that, and you have. So that was dumb, you should have inspected him. But anyway... We asked for that, they declined. They declined to tell us anything at all about the show jumping, nothing at all. The letter was basically, look, screw you. We're not inspecting this horse, there's nothing wrong with him. What else was there? Oh, you're welcome to serve us with court papers, that's absolutely fine. We're not considering a settlement, blah, blah, blah. It was just a basic F you. Basically, that's that's kind of what it was. Now, for the first time, I'll be I'll be open and honest with you and tell you that for the first time in a long time, I was kind of like, all right then, fuck you. And totally, guys, because of your donations. Because I was like, well, let's go. You're not the only one with a bit of cash. Let's fight this. Let's, I'll take you up on that, you know, bluff of yours that you've got going. She's obviously hoping that I stop. And I thought, yes, get the hell in. Come on then. So that happened. So the next thing to do was I spoke to my solicitor and I said, um, I guess we're going to serve court proceedings now. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, I need to go away and get you a quote of legal and how much it costs. Sorry, I think I'm blowing out there. I do apologize. Is there any way I can sit forward maybe? Two seconds. Let me just turn this down. Can I not turn that down? Right. That might be better. Sorry, guys. I'm getting blasted by the sun. It's reflecting off the car outside and it's just pew, straight back up. So much better. Apologies for that. So anyway, my solicitor basically said to me, look, I need to go away, give you a court for legal of our side of what it would take to go to court, essentially. So the barrister fee, loads of stuff like that, the court um, fees, I guess you could call them, everything else. And I'm going to come back to you with a quote. And I thought, excellent. This is good. This is good. Um, I got that quote back. I kind of ruined my day. Because... Essentially, the quote had, and I'm actually going to show you what she sent me. Um, literally, sorry, I'm just thinking about the day I found out. It, I, I got bowled over, and it was horrible. And I think I might have had the tiniest cry because someone pulled the rug from under me again, and I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it. I felt comfortable for the first time in like I don't know two years, and I had that comfort for about best part of a month, and then it was just rug pulled. And it was not long before Christmas. But I got a quote back for prepping to go to court. I think including there was barrister fees, uh, which she did say to me, I've had to upgrade the barrister because of the nature of the, the opposition. So she has a lot of money. She's going to barrister up. She might even bring two or three. Who knows? So we had to make sure we booked in a really, really top-notch one. Because it's not just your regular case when it gets to the point where the other side bring in some A-grade people anyway. So that was boosted. Um, court fees, were they 5% or 10%? I can't remember. It says what it says on the screen, but I, as I'm talking to you now, I haven't got that document in front of me. So it's it's on there as well. 
I can't remember what else there was on there, but I think I added it up and it came to about £16,000. And I'll be totally honest with you, I thought this whole thing would cost me about ten. I didn't think it would cost that much. And the problem there, and I still, I wanted to give you the answers here. This is why I've kind of waited a little bit longer. I want to give you these answers, but alas, I cannot because we don't have them yet. There's a lot of answers I couldn't get because basically barristers and the courts and stuff were very busy before Christmas for whatever reason. So the thing that is not included in this bill is the insurance. And that is the insurance that you take whereby if you if you lose and you have to pay the other side's costs, you won't have to. They will pay it for you. But as such, they will need some money from you. Now, I don't quite know how that works. I can't find enough info on the internet of how it works. And I don't have a quote back for it. So at the moment, it's looking like an estimate of £16,000. And that's not including insurance. And... Literally, guys, I'm just going to be totally level with you. I thought it would cost me about 10. And I thought, hey, that's hefty. I actually thought 10 would be on the, the upper side of it because I think it's only half a day in court. I don't think it needs loads and loads of time. It's relatively straightforward, really. It's only these guys making it dumb. You know what I mean? Um, so I was bowled over to get that. Um, still a bit bowled over. I messaged my sister, I think, Oh, it's Monday today, so I think it was on Friday or something, just saying, look, have we got any updates? Um, I haven't heard back from her, so I'm going to have to pass her again um, because I still don't have any clue on this insurance stuff. I know a lot of people have said a lot of things about going to court and not going to court, and ultimately I want to go. I want to go because this one has pissed me off quite a bit. Um, yeah, I can't go into detail because a lot of things were, were passed down the grapevine to me off the record. But there's been things said about this case, I, I believe, anyway. Um, and they're, they're not very nice. And it's, it's very evident, anyway, that these people are enjoying this. I'll say, it, I'll say that. So I wanted to go to court for, for many reasons. The same reasons I always wanted to go to court initially. But now I really want to go to court. But as I say, I wasn't expecting this. So I've come to sort of a, a short-term decision because I can't make the full decision because I don't have the full set of information and believe me I wanted to have the information before I made this video that's why this video is late that's why you didn't get this information before the new year essentially and then I've even waited three weeks on that but what I've decided to do is if the insurance company will insure me and I can afford to pay whatever the actual bill is whatever I will go to court. And the reason I will do that, it take into account anything else, money, anything, doesn't matter, is that if the insurance company insures me, it means they think I'm going to win. Because they're not going to want to gamble with that amount of money. I think the claim is £25,000. That's just the claim, by the way, if you're wanting to know the how that breaks down on that thing, because I don't think it says what my claim is. My claim is £25,000. If they insure me, they think I'm going to win. So what I unfortunately need to do is probably pay my solicitor to put this case together for an insurer just to see if they will insure me. So it's going to cost a little bit more than that. Um, if I win, by the way, I stand to gain the 25000 I also stand to gain all of that legal back, which would probably sort out most of the financial problems I have. I haven't massively considered not going to court, I'm going to be honest with you, and that's going to make some people feel elated and some people feel really disappointed, and I get that, and that I guess that's life. I can't, I'm always going to disappoint somebody because it's A or B. So I haven't really considered not going. That's kind of where I'm at with it, really. I can't, I can't give you the, as much info as I'd like. I'm being very transparent with you about the costs here, and that is because you guys gave me money, so I want to show you what that's going to translate into, right? And by the way, anything I'm saying today, I will do my best to put the short form bullet points on the GoFundMe. You won't get a full, um, full breakdown of it, but I'll probably link this video if I can. I'm doing this before I update it. If that, if I can do that, I will just link this video for more info, even though it's long, but hey ho. So that's kind of where I'm at. 
if the insurers will insure me, it means they think I'm going to win beyond reasonable doubt, I suppose. There's obviously always a doubt. I could always still lose somehow. But if I get insured, it means they think I'm going to win. So that's where we're at with the situation. I, I didn't think the cost would come to this much, guys. It's, it's poetic, isn't it, really? It's, it's literally poetic because you guys were so generous and donated an amount to me that I didn't think was fathomable. And yet it's kind of approaching what I would need anyway, which is, is wild. So I want to take the opportunity to thank you again anyway for everything you've done because, because of you, I even have a shot at still going to court anyway. Because if we never even hit the 3000 that I think was on the GoFundMe, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation anyway. We'd, I would have to walk away. So I can genuinely only express my deep, deep, deep gratitude that we're even having this conversation. Honestly, it's, that means so much to me. So seriously, thank you very much. I still want justice for this pony because it's not nice walking past him every day and seeing his ears back and having him even in the field like that. And, you know, he deserves more than that. And it's a shame because he has his, he has his new mum, he has his new owner and obviously they're getting on well, but I, I still feel bad for him. Do you know what I mean? He didn't, it didn't have to be this way for him. He didn't have to be sat there a year to get this. And I'm pleased he has got this. Don't get me wrong. This, I, I'm so happy I've done what I've done, even at a huge loss. I'm really, really happy with that decision because it was best by the horse. It wasn't best for me. It was best by the horse. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm just, please, like, don't take this video as me going, oh, well, I thought it was fine, but now it's not. And I'm not ungrateful for you guys sending me that money. I'm, I'm trying to tell you I am because we could not have this conversation that we're currently having right now if you hadn't even done that. So please don't feel obligated to do anything further. Just don't. That's not what this video is. I'm just trying to be very transparent with you about what is actually going on at this end. So yeah, that's kind of the update. I don't think, I mean, I've got, you probably can't see here. I've got all these points on this video <laughs> and I didn't want to leave anything out. That's not to say there won't be more updates, by the way, obviously. Um, there will be a legal update at some point, no doubt, because Augie's still at the livery. I can give you updates on how he's doing. Um, but that's kind of it. There'll be no more letters back and forth though between us and the seller. That's not going to happen. Just to let you know that I've got that written down here to tell you that the light at the end of the tunnel, however, for me personally is it's definitely there. Um, there is another chapter to all of this. I'm not going to talk about it today because this video is completely and utterly about Bobby Oggy and, and the situation. And I want to give him full full time and attention for that. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's that. You will hear things in the future anyway, but for now that is my update. And I hope that answers a lot of questions. As I say, I will update the GoFundMe where applicable. If there's anything that you're not sure of, you could leave a comment and either I or someone else can answer the question for you. If there's a bit of information that you've missed out and you're like, hang on a minute, what's going on with this? But that's essentially it. So yeah. I don't know what else I've got to say. Really, that's everything I had written down to tell you. And I think we've gone through all of it. So thank you very much for watching this update, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want a recap on what all of this is about, I've linked the original video down below. Again, it doesn't have all of the information in it at all whatsoever because this has gone on for well over a year now. But you probably will get the gist of it anyway. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I will love you and leave you. Thank you so much for your time. It means a lot to me that you're even interested in anything that isn't plants because this is a plant channel. So I'm really, really grateful for everything you've ever done, including watching my videos, the help with the GoFundMe, lending some advice, lending an ear. Honestly, I really appreciate it. So I will love you and leave you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.